welcome back to my channel, Diamonds and Washi. My name is Katie, and I am here today with my weekly whip and chat. So if you're new or just aren't sure what that means, whip stands for work in progress, in this case, a diamond painting, my current whip. Uh, and a chat just means we're going to spend some time chatting and catching up and talking about life, crafting, diamond painting, all sorts of stuff. And yeah, we'll probably be here for around an hour. And I always look forward to these every Monday morning, getting to catch up with you and check in and see how you're doing as well. So um, feel free to whip out your whip. I haven't used that in a while <laughs> uh, and work alongside me. Some people will treat this like a podcast Some people will go ahead and watch as I'm actually diamond painting. It's whatever works for you, honestly. I, I love putting on whip and chats and vlogs and stuff in the background uh, to keep me company while I'm just getting stuff done around the house or sitting in to do some crafting myself. So as far as what I'm going to be working on and with, um, I'm going to be working on my cross stitch conversion project, which is where I'm taking a cross stitch chart and turning it into a diamond painting by uh, reading the chart and putting the diamonds on a blank canvas. Uh, this is a rather long term project, which I'll talk to you a little bit more about in just a little bit. But the name of the artwork is um, Once Upon a Fairy Tale. It's by Amy Stewart. The cross stitch chart is from Heaven and Earth Designs and the canvases and drills are from Evermoment. So um, then as far as accessories goes, I have this pen, which I recently opened in a small shop haul from Norse Alchemist. I have uh, this trace from Muni Made, I think. Is this one of their magic colors? I don't remember the name of this one. Blue Lagoon, maybe. And then I have um, Notre Mama's Mud. I'm going to use this in my single placer. And then I'm going to try out the Butterfly Effect Wears Dot Dot Putty in my multi placer. Caveat, I have used their Dot Dot Putty before, but just the one that comes like flat in um, a resealable bag. This is the first time I'm going to be trying out their putty in a tin. I'm guessing it's the same exact formula but we're gonna try it out anyway. I think you just get more of it because this one is called uh, medium and then they have a large tin as well. And this definitely looks like more than you get in the like little Ziploc bag, which where it's kind of just like a little, it's like a one inch square um, and it's real flat. So we're gonna see what this is like uh, to work with. I, I assume it's gonna be the same, but loading it is obviously gonna be a little bit different. So um, I'm actually, yeah, let me go ahead and get my pen loaded up and then I need to prep the next couple columns of my canvas and I'll explain what that means as I'm working with this. So, oh my gosh, that smells really strong. <laughs> Not necessarily in a bad way, but, um, okay. That actually, I don't know if that's going to need any additional washi tape to keep it secure. I had a really hard time getting the single placer actually in the end here. Um, they don't send their own and I have a little stash of single placers, but every once in a while, it seems like a pen company will turn their pens and the holes that they'll drill for the placers will be so like snug and I appreciate not wanting to end up giving us you know where it's gonna be like a wobbly placer but if I'm like I can't even get the plastic in I have a feeling what I could do is I could maybe um just put a little bit of heat on the plastic maybe just like under a hot hair dryer or some hair dryer or something like that and then um does that just like come on out? I'm gonna try just pinching off a bit of it. Uh, flat into my tweezers might be even better. Um, so what was I saying? Oh, and then maybe if I like heat it up the, oh, yep, that, that would just pop on out as well. Okay, uh, I heat up the flat end of the single placer and then maybe that would kind of make it malleable enough that it would go in, that kind of squish in more easily. This is a little bit soft. I think I definitely, took off way too much, but let's see if I can get that to load in there. Yeah, not exactly. Very elegant, am I? Um, it's not the first time I've had putty that's come out of a tin like that, but they can each be fickle in their own way. Actually, that may have been just the right amount. We'll give that a try and we'll see. I really need to experiment. I've seen so many different creators um, and friends talk about I feel like Lindsay from Emeralds and Fairy Lights. I, unless I'm misremembering, she's the first person who I heard it uh, heard about this from. I really want to experiment with adding some cornstarch to any of my putties that are too soft for me to use. I know the butterfly effect wears is quite that, but um, uh, because I've heard that that can make your putties like less soft and if that makes a putty that you're otherwise not going to be able to use actually feel usable then that's a win right so I need to experiment with that at some point but uh, what I'm doing now is I'm going ahead because I just finished a set of columns on this particular kit and um I already 
Okay. Perfect. And then what I'm going to do is I, I'm going to grid this out. Um, while there are some lines that are slightly faint that you can make out, uh, that are slightly darker, I feel like where you can, oh no, you got lots of glare. Of course you can't see that. I'll fix that in a second. Give me just a moment. Um, I like to go in and do Sharpie marks to make that, make those lines more apparent. That way it just makes it easier when I'm uh, counting and placing drills. Speaking of counting, one, two, three, four, five, one, two, three, four, five, perfect. Um, and because this canvas has square drills on it, I don't have to worry about the uh, these lines showing around them at all. Um, so yeah, I'll try to see what I can do about that glare. When the plastic was down, it wasn't, or I had like accessories down, it wasn't as obvious. I will adjust you, I'll see if I can get you so you're not just got that big old glare in your eyes if you actually wanna see me diamond painting. Um, but the chart that I use is in Pattern Keeper, which is an app that uh, you can get on your Fire, the, an Amazon Fire tablet, like the one that I have. Sometimes you do have to jump through a couple hoops to get the Google Play Store onto your Fire tablet. There's uh, articles out there about how to do it. It looks like it might be slightly sketchy initially when you click into it and you're like, wait, I have to like install this thing on it and this thing, it's fine. Like, trust me, I am a skeptical and uh, like, don't don't make me do something sketchy as they come and it's it's fine it really is all fine um and then so use the pattern keeper app you could absolutely read a paper chart instead if you wanted to where you're just reading a paper chart and you're counting off and going okay here's the symbol and this goes here and then marking it off on your chart i cannot fathom doing this with a paper chart i think it's fantastic if there are people out there that can and i know that they do um but having it in digital form where it will highlight the symbols for me and it has these kind of these 10 by 10 grid lines in the chart and so that's why i'm also just darkening them on here because it just it makes it so much easier to count in place uh, as I've been working on this chart, I've been doing it in these sets of two columns across, like two 10 wide columns across, and I found that to be uh, relatively efficient for me. I'm pretty happy with how it uh, how it works out and how quickly I seem to get through get through them. I am currently on panel seven of eight. And if you are happy to glance in here and you're seeing over here off to the side, yes, I'm nearing the end of panel seven of eight. Um, and why it's split into eight panels. Sorry, I'm trying to like talk and do something like this at the same time. I'm struggling, I feel so halfway distracted. Okay, hopefully I'm gonna be a little less distracted now because now I can just lay this down and then I use release paper to give myself uh, somewhere to put my hand so it's not going in the glue. And then I'll try to explain more coherently more about this project as well as fix up the camera angle so you're not getting a bunch of glare. Okay, okay, perfect. Okay, so uh, bear with me, hold on one second. Actually, you know what, this will be easier, I'll be right back. Great, right. hopefully that'll be a little bit better. So anyway, um, basically this chart is so large that to turn it into a diamond painting, it's, I should have these num numbers memorized by now. It's really big, <laughs> so to make it more, um, accessible to work on and not completely overwhelming to work on. I broke it down into eight separate panels. Each of the panels is like 35 by 95 ish centimeters. That includes a little bit of extra wiggle room. And um, this just, like I said, makes it easier to work on. And yeah, so I broke it into eight panels uh, to suit the artwork. I guess I could actually show you. Let me show you the artwork itself so you can see no. <laughs> Uh, let's see, view PDF. And so here is the original artwork. And where we're at right now, so I've completed all three of the first three shelves and I'm on the bottom left corner. So I've come along here. And the columns that I just finished, you can see the woman that's holding a sword. And this is like a unicorn or a horse's like tail here. So these next couple of columns we're gonna get into should have like this banner it looks like, and then the rest of this woman and maybe part of the horse, we'll see. And then there's like a little gargoyle down here. And then this, this panel will end probably right down the middle and probably will have the once upon down here at the bottom right. So um, yeah, this project is over two years in the making at this point. And 
I just have hit some really high momentum um, in the past couple of months and can't find myself able to put it down. So I'm just kind of, I'm rolling with it. Uh, last week's Whip and Chat though, I know I completely made the comment about how, oh, I'm, you're starting to feel a bit of burnout. And I, I think I said that in last week's Whip and Chat. And so I definitely don't want to risk that at all. But I just, I took a couple of days to work on, well, I just worked on a section or two of my cute little kitty for Drills and Chills. And it was like, as soon as I finished you know, a section, I was like, okay, I'm ready to go back to my cross-stitch conversion project. So follow the dopamine. Um, make sure someone's getting his first couple started is the trickiest because I, um, gives me something to work with. Uh, so yeah, I'm, I think that I have a lot of momentum with this project because the end is basically in sight. And I guess after this, I just have one more, uh, oops, nope, that doesn't go there. I just have one more uh, panel to do. Now I am right in the midst also of hosting Drills and Chills, so of course I'm wanting to make sure I'm spending time on that event as well. But the nice thing is, is that at least for this month, I had mostly smaller Drills and Chills projects planned, so it's not, too too hard for me to squeeze in this cross stitch conversion around that um and yeah so um what are my overall thoughts on this this panel in general has been a little bit more of a confetti mess though these last couple of columns have been a little bit better which is nice and it's it's coming together. I think I just am exhilarated at the thought of completing this project. And at this point, barring just a wild, wild flare of burnout uh, that's very sudden, I am going to be aiming very, very much so to finish this entire project by the end of the year. Um, yeah, that's, I'm going to go ahead and say out loud that I think that's my goal. <laughs> so, um, Let's count down a couple of squares. I wonder if I should have started with a different color. I'll switch to another color next. That'll make it easier to create some grids that are easier to go off of. So um, one, two, three, one, two, three, four, perfect. Yeah, I should have went with a different color first. That's okay. Um, so I have not finished my first Drills and Trills project, which is Under My Umbrella by Diamond Art Club. It's like I, I mentioned that cute uh, cat kit that has the cat under the umbrella with the fall leaves blowing by. I think part of the reason I haven't felt the itch to work on that one as much as we've been in the midst of a really, really extreme heat wave here in Southern California. This is peak summertime for us, and I have no fall spirit in my bones at all at the moment. <laughs> uh, but... I um, I do have in mind the dragon kit that I want to work on this month, which I think will be my uh, dragon mini dazzles kit that I got from Diamond Art Club um, as a sneak peek that came out a couple weeks back. And that is so cute. I'm excited to get to that one. But I think I'm going to be powering through. Hopefully in the next few days I will finish this panel and then I can take a break before I open up panel eight and work on some of my fall projects. Um, and hold on a second. One, two, and that means at the bottom of this one it should be, I know this is terrible. I'm so sorry, you guys, give me just a second. One, two, three, and then on this one, okay. It's just the timing. I had just finished the last two columns before I sat down to film uh, this video. And it's it really is just that first color, especially getting into a new set of columns. That's, yeah, that's what takes the most brain power for me. Okay, so, so. <laughs> um, I uh, Drills and chills. Let's talk about drills and chills. So kickoff has happened. We talked about it a little bit last week. Um, and I am really blown away by really the sheer number of people participating. I was taking a look actually just this morning to see uh, my week one video 
had been up for about 24 hours at that point, a little bit more than 24 hours. And I went and looked just to see, oh, I wonder how many comments um, there are on this video, how many entries are we looking like we're gonna have for week one, at least on my video. And it was almost one and a half thousand comments, which is still very mind blown to me. <laughs> um, and I looked in last year's week one video on my channel, after having been up for a week, had 1.3 or 1.5 thousand comments. And so we've already hit or surpassed last year's. So I guess that is maybe a, a marker for just like, I there's lots of people joining in this year, which has really, really, really been fun. Um, if you are interested in participating, if you haven't heard of Drills and Chills, and you're like, wait, what's this? I wanna find out more. Um, I will link you, I'll, I'll do my best to remember to link to the kickoff video that I did. And um, as well, there's a Facebook group that if you like, you can join in on. If you want to share your projects that you're working on, or if you're on Discord, there's a Discord uh, server that my friend Sophie has that she created a Drills and Chills channel on, which was so sweet. So um, those are some ways you get involved in the social aspect. And uh, if you happen to have been someone that sent me an email related to Drills and Chills, I um, I did take the past couple of days off from responding to emails that weren't necessarily like emergencies. And so apologies for the delay if you're waiting on an email back from me. I also had, and this is not a complaint, I promise, it's just a, it's a statement, it's not at all a complaint. Um, I have gotten around like 30 to 50 emails a day since Drills and Chills started. Um, well, actually since before Drills and Chills, I think the past, the couple of days before, and then up until, I think today it was a little, it was a little less, but so that's purely just to say that's why I'm a little bit slow, uh, to get back to all those emails, but I will, I will, I will really try to respond to those as quickly as I can. Um, it's, you know, what happened is it's really in a lot of ways, it's my own fault because the I think the majority of the issues are coming from some technical details with the entry form. And it's because of something that I did and something that I didn't understand too. Um, there were a couple issues that came up and I, I'm really, really sorry if you're someone that's been frustrated or, or had trouble with the Drills and Drills entry form. If you're if you are one of those people and you haven't watched my week one video where I mentioned it, but if you aren't able to attach your start photo to the entry form, um, or if you decide to change your mind on what project you want to work on, you can either email me a new start photo, or if you couldn't attach it at all in the first place and you're like, Hey, I can't get it to attach. How do I enter? You can just email me your start photo and we'll attach it on the, on the back end. My email for my channel is just diamonds and washi at gmail.com. So, um, I promise we're we're doing our very very best. Um, I feel I feel so bad. Like uh, all of us involved, it feels like have been um, sick or had other kind of extenuating circumstances come up that have made it hard for us to keep up. And that's not how it was last year at all. And so we're just we're uh, trying to still make sure that we're helping everyone that needs help and just tapping in, tapping out, making sure we're getting. Uh, try, try not to miss stuff as, as best we can. Um, but yeah, six annual drills and chills is going strong. And I already have been brainstorming quite a bit in the way of some different content ideas. I was actually talking to Adam about an idea that I'm going to try to get him involved in one of my videos for drills and chills this year. I think that would be really, really fun. Um, and you guys were so sweet when I had my mom on. Uh, for for drills and chills, I kind of thought, oh well, you know, maybe maybe you guys would enjoy seeing my hubby on as well. So I, I have a couple of possible ideas, and if there's anything in particular that you're really interested in seeing, um, you have to let me know. There's yeah, there's a lot of different things that I'm mulling over. I've been poking my head into um, some stories and coming across some things that have given me some ideas too. So hopefully. Hopefully it's a good event. I'm trying to take it really just sort of one week at a time, a little bit follow my nose as far as what I want to do for my weekly videos. I don't know if this is like 
confession time. <laughs> You'll be shocked to hear, but I don't have all of my content mapped out. Like, okay, my week one video is going to be this. My week two video is going to be that. My week three video is going to be this. I have rough ideas, but a lot of the times I'm just going with, okay, well, what do my other videos look like this week? What do I actually have in hand on time? Um, what do I, what am I in the mood to do? I, I'm definitely prone to, um, sort of following my nose and being like uh, being a mood crafter being a mood video maker <laughs> i feel like i have to be feeling it in a lot of ways in order to you know want to do it and want to enjoy doing it so I, and it, it works it's, it works sometimes it comes back to bite me a little bit for being a procrastinator but i think for the most part it we do okay we do okay i have to say you guys right now like you should mark your calendars. You're witnessing a miracle right now. Do you see this color blocking I've been doing right here? I just placed, I used my actual 12 placer to place 12 diamonds in a row over here. This is 100% unheard of in this project. I'm being a little bit dramatic, but I'm also not telling a lie. <laughs> this is this is wild. This is the most amount of color blocking I've had in this whole project. This is that banner. Um, that, this is that banner that I was pointing out when we just looked at the artwork, but I'm floored right now. I've never seen this kind of color blocking. I feel like even areas where I've looked at the artwork and gone like, huh, it seems like that would be color blocked the same color. No, half the time it's just, it's a confetti mix of a bunch of different shades of that color. So I'm kind of delighted right now. This is wonderful. <laughs> um... And it's going so fast. I'm like, oh my gosh, I'm getting to place so many diamonds like per minute. Um, this could be great. This could be great. <laughs> I um, So yeah, that's kind of like the drills and chills update. Uh, like I said, a lot of the issues with the forms, it's not you guys, especially like there. Okay, so a bunch of people, we kept seeing people comment in the Facebook group. Occasionally I would get, and I was getting emails, people saying, I filled out my form and then my confirmation message said, do not use. I don't understand. Did I fill out the right form? And we were, we were very confused and we're like, how are they getting to the do not use form? Because what had happened was there was, um, I'm not going to go into like, I'm trying to think how to explain it like short and sweet. Basically at one point we had to make a copy of, um, of the forms so that we could basically change who was owning the form and whose Google Drive it went back to for when people uploaded pictures because that takes up storage. And it's like, well, I'm already paying for some additional Google Drive storage. Uh, and so why don't we switch it so it's going back to my account and not to Lindsay's? But as much time, as many hours as I spent trying to really finesse the wording and make things be really super clear with how it was all written in the form and everything, you know what I forgot to do? I forgot to proofread it 100% and actually click through the links that had copied over in the description boxes of these forms. And in the description boxes of these forms, we had made sure to put notes that said, okay, if you're looking for this form, like if you're wanting to submit your start photo, you're on the wrong form, click over to this form instead. Those links I forgot to update to reflect the new forms. And so a number of people, about 300 to exact, clicked into, uh, like ended up in, um, they initially clicked into the wrong form and then followed the link in the form to the, cor the correct form, but the correct form said do not use. The good news is it still captured all of the information necessary, um, but there were some issues with like the reason people, a bunch of people couldn't upload photos was because there was no storage space left on Lindsay's drive to take those photos. And so it was declining so many people that were trying to upload their photos at a certain point. And so that's what happened with that. And so there were some other issues that were unrelated to that that came up, but I cannot tell you like, yes, I know, like it's just a mistake, it happens. But I just feel so bad that like, that was on me, that was a mistake that I made. And I'm mostly upset with myself because it created a ton more work for um, not just me, but like for the other like mods and people involved with helping with making the event happen. And so that's, I was just kind of kicking myself over that for a little bit, like, dang it, just missed one thing when it came to proofreading. <laughs> but 
oh well, it's la it's you just you have to laugh. Or you know, you don't want to cry, so you laugh instead. <laughs> um, and it's all fine. It's really it's all gonna be okay. Um, there's another color on here. There was a bunch of. Let's do this color next. So look at that. We got a little bit of the banner there. That was delightful. <laughs> um, so this uh, this past week, I did. I don't know that you necessarily. I I don't expect anyone to have my posting patterns memorized by any stretch. But if you notice that, oh, it seems like you know there was one less video last week. You would be correct. I ended up taking a weekday. Uh, one of my weekdays off from putting up a video. So there were just four videos that went up last week instead of five. Um, I had thought, you know, it's okay. I didn't want to take off from my whip and chat after all, even though I had thought about it last week. But then I thought, you know, I could really take off on a weekday. And I just don't think there's going to be, I don't think that's going to be a problem. Um, and no, I didn't have a single person being like, wait a second, you normally do another video during the week. Where is it? Um, which I appreciate if anyone had noticed and deliberately decided not to say anything. But no, I just thought, let me let me just catch my breath, take a day off and from, you know, filming and uploading. And that, that was good. I was glad that I did that. And that may happen intermittently throughout the event, just depending on um, sort of how, how busy things are and what all is going on um, and what I have to share with you video-wise. But you will always be seeing Drills and Chills videos from me on Saturdays and um well no I don't even know about sneak peeks because uh Diamond Art Club sneak peeks are pretty I mean I'm sure you've seen they're still very unpredictable and mostly arriving late so um they just I mean I'm waiting on a couple weeks I think now and um I think most I don't think I have any shipping notifications that I'm even waiting on so those videos will go up sporadically um, as things come in, but I'm just kind of being flexible and um, it'll happen when it happens. So, uh, but I did have my month in review video go up, which was fun. Um, it was really fun to be like, look, I have two more you know, cross stitch conversion panels and some snacky size kits too. I feel like that's gonna end up being the theme of this year. When I get to the end of the year and I'm doing my year in review, I think this is just going to be the, a year where I worked on a lot smaller scale kits. There's part of me that wonders if once I finish this cross stitch conversion project, if suddenly I'm going to feel like I have the desire to work some more like larger kits back into the rotation again, because I think this feels like such a large scale kit that I'm very hesitant to work on any other really large scale kits. And I've actually de-stashed quite a lot of big kits that were in my stash and yeah, I wonder. I'm curious if it's almost like a little bit of a mental block if I'll end up finishing this project and be like, okay, I'm ready to get some big big kits back in my rotation again now that this one's done. Who knows? Oh, I put that in the wrong spot. Okay, hold on. Let me do this. And then we'll just scooch this one over. You know what I just realized? I don't think you're probably going to be able to see me. Oh yeah, you can kind of. I was like, I'm placing like ivory drills. They're probably not going to show up as well on camera, but no, they're there. They're there. Um, place those. See, so a month in review video went up. I have not yet figured out how to fix up uh, Micah's little scribbles on my logbook, unfortunately. Um, I'm pretty bummed about it. I'm not gonna lie, and I'm hoping that I'll be able to find a way to get the the ink. So he basically he scribbled with ink pen on my the front cover of my logbook. That's like this faux suede or leather kind of material. I don't know my materials, so I'm not sure what the actual material is. Um, I tried using a baby wipe and it did not budge the ink at all, which I didn't expect it to, but I thought I would start with that because it was the gentlest. Um, and then I next tried a little bit of rubbing alcohol and it immediately started to damage like the color, like pull off some of the color of whatever that material is and um, took a little bit of the gold foil off too. And so I immediately stopped and it didn't even pull up that much of the pen. And next I'm going to just send an email over to Archer and Olive and ask like if they have any suggestions for what I might try to use instead white vinegar is the next thing I was thinking of trying but I'm not gonna actually try anything else until 
I send them a message and then hear back because I don't want to do further damage if I can help it. It's, you know, is it the end of the world? Of course not. Mike is a kid. He's going to do kid stuff. I left it out in his reach. Like, that's the reality of it. Like, it was laying out and so was the pen. The pen was sitting right next to it, which I had been updating my logbook before I filmed my month in review. So that's, it's completely on me. And no, I did not like yell at Mike or get mad at him. He is a kid. <laughs> um, and this, this kind of thing happens. But am I disappointed still? Oh yeah, absolutely. Um, because it's just, it's so pretty. But I bet I can find a way to sort of like I don't know like almost weather it a little bit like give it more of a weathered effect or something and so then it just sort of looks like it's part of it it's like oh Micah left his mark on my my diamond painting journey or something I'll find a way to spin it in my head so that I'm not like sitting here actively bummed about it or anything but um, we'll see I'm hoping like I said that maybe Archer and Olive might have some tips for me uh for you know some ideas for maybe some things I could try instead but um as far as other things that have been going on, um, it's been another week of just, it's had its ups and downs. Um, it, we had a quiet weekend here. Adam w is currently at a friend's birthday party. And I know he's been really missing getting to like see his, you know, spend some time with his friends. He's extrovert to the max. And so when he doesn't get like that, that friend time, it seems like, you know, his social battery, like his, his energy is depleted, whereas I'm textbook introvert. What is it about introverts and extroverts that tend to find each other and get married? <laughs> um, or, you know, be in relationships. I, where, so I'm honestly just happy to have a very quiet, mostly a quiet day at home because he went up to LA early. And um, it's just been, aside from the kiddos and the like usual sibling squabbles because they are absolutely that age. Uh, it's just been, it's been a very quiet weekend. In part, that's also been because it is extremely hot. It's very, 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 very hot. Adam took the kids to the pool uh, yesterday and he said even the water, like the water wasn't cool. Like it wasn't like, oh, so cool and refreshing. It was like, no, it's been in the triple digits Fahrenheit for several days now. Um, I think today was a high of 106 and Friday was a high of 108 so we've been hovering in that like 105 to 108 range for several days and tomorrow which is today the day this video was going up Monday it's supposed to drop down to like 101 and then we're supposed to drop into the 80s the rest of the week so fingers crossed that is accurate um, I know I saw that there are some fires that are happening out towards San Bernardino. So if you or your loved ones are being affected by that, I am just sending um, all of the thoughts and prayers and, and positive feelings your way. And I just hope, hope that everyone stays safe as do their homes. Um, it's, it's super scary and yeah fire season we've had like no I mean it's we don't get a lot of rain in the summer anyway but yeah we've had no rain for months so everything is just dry and that's why this is fire season unfortunately so I really really hope that everyone is um staying safe and taking care uh and even just like the dangers from the heat waves too I hope everyone is staying really safe so um that's one of the reasons we've just been kind of st staying inside um and I mean, it hasn't affected the kids at school for the most part. I think they did indoor lunch and indoor recess on Friday uh, because I mean, so this, let me tell you, this blew my mind when we moved out here, um, having originally lived in Ohio and grown up in Ohio, like there's, we didn't have outdoor like campuses for anything. Like everything was indoors. I mean like recess. Yes. There were playgrounds inside and stuff, but um in like the winter when there was snow or if it was like really raining outside, then it was, you know, very often, like several days a year, we'd have, you know, indoor recess or whatever when I was a kid. Um, but here it's like all the classrooms open to the outside, uh, as opposed to being like in a building where they open into a hallway, which is what I grew up being used to. So, um, and then like all the cafeteria and eating spaces, it's just covered pavilions outside and that's still just very sort of quaint and new to me <laughs> in a lot of ways um and um 
so yeah, just the extreme heat, I think, is what really pushed them to have, you know, keep kids inside and stuff. But anyway, um, I have been, uh, as far as sort of like the ups and downs, that includes, you know, my mental health still. Um, with everything we have going on, it's uh, it's not surprising to me. So I'm just doing my best to take steps to take care of my, my mental health still. And um, I've continued to find this Finch app really, really helpful, not sponsored at all. <laughs> There's no like affiliate things built into it. Um, it's just a, it's a self-care app. I was trying to explain it to Adam the other day. I was like, it's like you have a Tamagotchi, but it's, you're, you're by taking care of it, you're taking care of yourself. Like that's how you take care of it is by taking care of yourself. Um, and I've tried to really set, basically set myself up for success with it. It's like, I have goals that are like, just get out of bed, step outside, message a friend. I'm not trying to go, uh, you know, go big or go home kind of thing with this. I'm just trying to put in things that it's like, I know I can achieve, but sometimes I just need like a little extra nudge to make it happen because this is the kind of thing that depression and anxiety do to your brain is it makes things that sound like they should be incredibly simple. No big deal. Hello. Why are you having a hard time with this? This is called just being an adult, like suck it up and deal. Um, it takes those things that should be that, <laughs> that easy. And is it's like, no, it's, it's heavy. It's hard. It's your brain. Like it's the, the physiology of it. It's working against you. And it's not that you are a failure or you're doing something wrong. Um, it's yeah it goes deeper than that so sometimes things like this can can help so I like watching my little bird grow and do little like adventures and explorations and seeing um like what little cute clothing or uh, home decor options drop each day because those are surprises it's just you know what whatever works <laughs> and I think it's really really cute so um I also did I can't remember if I talked about this last week. I did have the chance to talk with my doctor and I'm looking at making some adjustments with my uh, my meds and I'm kind of in the midst of doing that now. I don't really know how I feel about it. I don't feel worse, but I don't know that I necessarily feel better. Um, but I'm just waiting on, we should be getting some things in the mail like any day related to our um, like medical insurance and stuff. And hopefully we'll be able to find out like, okay, what does our... Uh, coverage look like as far as um, other like therapies go is that did I pick one hmm okay um but we're you know it's 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 been going okay it's been going okay um I have had thankfully mostly a break from the headaches I did I had stopped taking that multivitamin gummy like a couple weeks back when my mom mentioned something about like it might be the artificial sweeteners and dyes that are in that that could be a problem. Uh, which I know for my mom, like I remember this from when I was a kid, that she can't have anything that has, uh, the name brand is NutraSweet, but it's, um, shoot, how do you pronounce it? Is it aspartame or aspartame? It's a particular artificial sweetener she knows is an instant migraine trigger for her. And I wonder if some of these migraine triggers I'm sort of taking on after her as I get older because I guess her migraines didn't really start until uh, she you know was done having kids and was in like her mid to late 30s so um, but stopping taking that multivitamin I feel like that could have been something that has helped with having fewer migraines but um, I am one of my goals is to start actively tracking uh, my symptoms and everything again because I really slacked off on that but just to track overall my headaches and migraines so that I can uh, then go to my doctor with that data and be like okay here's here's the latest <laughs> here's the latest um, and I think that's especially important with since I'm looking at doing med changes because whenever you're looking at uh, medication that not, not a doctor obligatory disclaimer not a doctor not giving medical advice uh, if you are if medication is something that you're looking at for your depression anxiety you go to a doctor don't don't go off on anything I'm saying because um, it's all just specific to me and my doctor Elda. anyway um, but because like uh, medication for depression and anxiety messes with your brain chemistry that's why often there is the side effect of migraines and headaches and so it's really important I feel like to track um track my headaches and migraines that way in case we find that there is this link as I might be trying new meds again um we'll have that 
information to be able to take a look back on. So um, there is that. I did have to fuss a little bit with a small headache with regards to insurance. I And I was on the phone with them for like an hour last week because I kept getting bills in the mail from our old insurance and going, why am I still getting this? I kept thinking that it was going to drop off, but no, I kept, I kept getting um, like updated bills. So it was weird. So let me try to explain. We had um, one insurance type through Marketplace. It was an HMO um, in uh, July. Then we switched, same insurance company, but we switched to a PPO for August and uh, signed up through you know Marketplace too and assumed that when we signed up for the new plan in August that insurance carrier and or cover California weren't going to be like, oh, yes, yeah, so you obviously want to be paying for both of these insurance plans. At least on the covered California side, it looked like it had gone ahead and canceled the old one and renewed us with a new plan. But no, I keep getting bills from the insurance carrier saying like we owe our monthly payment for the HMO payment for the HMO plan for the month of August too. And I'm like, no, it's <laughs> like, so hold them and um, and then they're it's saying we owe for both for the month of September and so I had to call them and be like okay so we did this through Color Covered California and it looks like through them it was supposed to you know have reflected as having canceled the old one they're like oh we probably just didn't get um you know, the, that notice in the mail from them and that could take some time. I'm like, yeah, but I'm afraid, like I just got what says final notice on it. I'm afraid you're gonna send me to collections. And they said something like, oh, well, you should, you need to call, uh, call Covered California and have them, them send us this thing. I'm like, yeah, but are you gonna send me to collections or am I gonna have time to figure this out? Um, and the person like, like was like saying, oh no, it'll be fine, but I don't have a ton of confidence. So I'm gonna definitely be calling calling covered California tomorrow to be like, okay, listen, <laughs> I might even call back the insurance company and see if I get someone different tomorrow, just also to just see, cause they kept insisting there was nothing they could do from their end. I'm like, I don't under, okay, okay, okay. I guess this is just, this is just red tape, but please don't send me to collections. <laughs> even though, yes, 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 I know we could get it worked out if they did. Um, but I just, I really don't want the headache right now. And, um, I just feel like some of this should be common sense, but I mean, what do I know? Um, but it's it's all it's all working out. It's gonna be okay. Um, I did have to go ahead and bump. I was supposed to have surgery this month um, to help with the reason that I am so anemic. Um, but we just I, I talked with my doctor's office and we kind of confirmed like, yeah, I'm probably not gonna have all the authorizations that I need from our new insurance by that's the surgery date. And my doctor only does like one surgery date a month uh, for this. So um, it's okay. Like, it's not great that it has to be bumped, but it's not like I'm um, in like danger or anything like that. So uh, I have to wait until I actually get like a couple more things in the mail. And then I can officially like get back on the calendar, but I think I'm gonna have to go through the song and dance of uh, going to my primary doctor to get a referral over to this doctor and I'll have to like see her again and I'll have to do a song and dance to get everything submitted to insurance for um, authorization. And I don't know, I'm just hoping like if we can make it happen by the end of the year, that would be fantastic, <laughs> be fantastic. Um, Cause I think it will really help it just improve my overall quality of life. I think it'll help with my headaches and uh, my fatigue for sure. It's a huge part of why I struggle with fatigue because it's an iron deficiency anemia. And so, yeah, it's <laughs> never a dull moment, I suppose. But I hope that wasn't like TMI to talk about like, oh, here's this thing I have going on. But um, since like my energy levels and everything or something, I don't know, like fatigue and stuff is something that I talk about. I don't mind sharing about that much, but... Um, no, there's that other shade of red, but still some color blocking. It's so nice. So refreshing. Um, how we got on time? Oh, okay. I see where we're at. So what else? Oh, quick note from last week. Um, because I got a couple of comments and thought like, oh, I might have spoken in a way that was confusing when I was making... I was sort of laughing about getting this um, email from Starbucks about being like in the top 1% for pumpkin stuff um, for the past year. I wanted to be clear, like, 
I've been to Starbucks three times since the end of June. Um, and even that is, you know, some people would probably say like, oh, well, that's, that's too much if you're on a tight budget. Um, but like, you know, yes, we used to go probably at least once a week, sometimes twice a week. And, um, I yeah, probably twice a week, <laughs> uh, for a while. And that did all stop, but like the top percentage or whatever that Starbucks was calculating and sending that email out for, I'm pretty sure was looking at the past one year. So those numbers weren't from like, you know, last week or something like that. I am not, I did get one pumpkin drink on the day that pumpkin releases happened, but no, like I, I am fully aware that I am on a tight budget and no, I'm not going to Starbucks, uh, anywhere near as often as I used to. And when I do go, it's because I have a little, a little stash of gift cards I am treasuring and hoarding and stretching out to make last as long as possible. And so I'm trying to be very, very, very responsible and conscientious. And so I just wanted to add that little disclaimer on because I was like, I, I don't know. I felt funny about the idea that that would just feel really, I don't know, hypocritical and kind of like I would understand if you were side eyeing me about um, talking about being on a tight budget and then hearing, wait, you got into this top 1% of Starbucks for pumpkin stuff. And I was like, no, no, no. It's from like the past one year. And that means that yes, even minus the past two months that apparently we still managed to, um, get that much pumpkin stuff because of my youngest and his love for pumpkin bread. <laughs> so anyway, just, I just thought I would throw that out there. So I throw that out there. Um, and then as far as little updates on the kiddos go, school's going well. Uh, they're both they're both still really enjoying their teachers and their classmates and everything. I am half expecting that here in the next week or two, we may see the kind of crash that I've noticed as a pattern with them um, in past school years where it seems like we will uh, be doing really, really well, trucking along and everything. And then after the first couple weeks, sort of the honeymoon period and the novelty of going back to school tapers off. And then there's a little bit of like a, um, we swing back hard the other way. And that just is part of the, like the, the term for it we are talking about, like, especially with regards to kids that are autistic is transitions. It's a big transition. And so this is when it's like a, it almost hits that, okay, yes, this is really a transition that we are going through and this is, this is part of it. So a little bit anticipating that and ready to just be extra patient with them and remind myself that, okay, if they're having a hard time, it's probably because of this and their teachers know, I'm sure that it's not just neurodivergent kids that struggle with this too. I don't mean to imply that. Um, but, um, yeah. So anyway, I'm anticipating that, but, um, Micah is just, he's so cute. His teacher keeps talking about how he just is so happy and so sweet. He's just loving school. Um, Connor continues to talk about how he feels like his teacher is um, just so nice, which makes my heart really happy. Again, his teacher last year wasn't mean. She just wasn't, I think, as warm necessarily maybe that doesn't mean she wasn't a good teacher and that you know that there aren't good things about that um it's just you know different kids click differently with different teachers and so I'm hoping this means that Connor is going to continue to um just gel really well with with this teacher so um I'm happy about that he had book they had book fair this past week and so Connor was excited to um get to go pick out a book and uh, I don't know if Micah's class actually went to book fair, but um, that's okay. <laughs> Micah has lots of books. I always go in in the morning and he just has piles of books on the floor around his bed because he just, he wakes up and he reads. Sometimes he'll read for a little bit and then go back to sleep. And like this morning, um, he was just so quiet. I poked my head in at 1030. I was like, I knew he had been awake and reading, but he hadn't wanted to come out yet. So I poked my head in to check on him at like 1030 and he had fallen back asleep on his bed. And I thought, I'm going to, I'm going to go ahead and let him sleep because I think that he plays some catch up on the weekends after, um, after the earlier mornings that come with the school week. So I just, I just let him snooze, just, just let him snooze. Um, and yeah, so it's been good. It's been good. And Micah, I was just thinking this past week. 
um, it was like it kind of hit me all of a sudden and I was like he has really really come an incredibly long way with his speech and just how much more he can express himself and like the words he has the vocabulary he has and just sort of the understanding that he has um, and it seems like his teacher this year is doing an amazing job already of working with him on those things. Like I heard him just sort of gently correcting him a little bit on like right now, he still will want to refer to himself a lot of times in the third person. Um, and, and same like with us, like he'll say mom does it or Micah does it or something. So we've been working with him on like, we're at the a point where it's like, okay, let's work on using I and you. And I heard his teacher working with him on that too, even as we were picking him up. So, um, I just, I had a proud mom moment where I was like, we're really, we're seeing how much difference, how much a difference there, there really is between last year and this year, this time. Um, and just how much speech therapy helped. I still want to look at once we have our new insurance stuff, maybe, uh, finding out like if speech therapy would be covered, uh, because I, again, we saw how much that did help and continuing with private speech therapy can only help more. He does get some speech through the school district. Um, but just the setting that it's in, it's, um, like, I think it's like small group type speech, which is fine. Uh, but we like to supplement that with private speech as we're able. So, um, hoping that's on, that's on my list of things to check as soon as we have as soon as we have that enrollment packet I've got I've got priorities to figure out so um but no he's he's doing great I just I'm feeling in spite of everything that's going on with our personal lives and everything that I know I've talked with you guys quite quite a lot here and I'm um hope that hasn't been too much of an emotional burden on you and I appreciate that you make this continue to make this a space where I can share about those things. Um, in spite of all of that, I feel like my kids are really just, we've got good things happening as far as their, their start to their school year goes. So I'm thankful, thankful, thankful for that so much, so much. Um, and then, okay. As far as what we're reading and watching and listening to. So reading, I'm going to co-opt this, this section a little bit because I don't have any exciting reading updates. But I got chatting in, uh, in Sophie's Discord. There's a video games channel within that. There's a channel for everything. It's so fun. Um, but they were talking about, one of the gals in there was talking about how she is like playing one of the Dragon Age games leading up to the new Dragon Age game that's uh, really, I think she's playing Inquisition leading up to the, there's new Dragon Age coming out, I think on Halloween. Um, I haven't played some of the latest Dragon Age games. I should, but, but sister game franchise is Mass Effect. And that remains one of my, top favorite game franchises of like all time it's like mass effect horizon zero dawn and kingdom hearts there's a fourth one assassin's creed that's and assassin's creed is easily number four the other three tend to jockey for the top spot um but uh we're talking then the night like mass effect a couple other people came in and we're talking about it and it a little bit has got me in the mood to try replaying the mass effect trilogy again we pretend like Andromeda doesn't exist. It was that <laughs> so bad, you guys. It was so bad. Though I did just start another. I'm really getting these really ultra long form videos. I just started a four hour video that was from a guy. I don't remember the channel name. Um, it was only posted three months ago, but the title of the video was like, "Was Mass Effect Andromeda really that bad?" And so he's like doing a playthrough of the game and. Um, doing like a commentary on it as he goes and I'm like an hour into it and I'm, I'm digging it. And it's funny because I felt like that game was so forgettable. I'm like, Oh, I forgot that. I forgot even this person's name, but the original mass effect trilogy, it's like cemented in my memory and brain because it's just so, 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 so good. And I played and played and replayed those games a lot. And then I did burn myself out on them. I don't think I've played a mass effect game in, I mean, I think it was before Micah was born. So over six years, it has to have been over six years. And I, as we were talking about uh, the game and some characters and stuff, I thought, oh, I am kind of having an itch to replay this, uh, this series. But the problem with gaming is that it takes away from diamond painting. <laughs> That's the only honest, honestly real kicker. Maybe once I finish my conversion, conversion project, this project, then maybe I'll, I'll, let myself do some gaming because <laughs> that could be like a little 
a, a, like a push, I guess. And also, uh, I don't know, like this project is really time consuming. Uh, and so it's like I'm switching one time consuming thing for another, maybe. I don't know. I don't know. But I was just, it got me thinking and I thought, ooh, I could replay that trilogy. I think that it's been enough years that it would feel like fresh and fun again. Um, yeah. Yeah. So anyway, just co-opting my, my reading update for a gaming update instead. Um, and then watching, okay. I just said that I was been, have been really into these long form um, videos lately, like these video essays, video commentaries, that sort of thing. I came across this, I kid you not, it was a six and a half hour, no, 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 like six hours and five minutes. It wasn't six and a half hours. Six plus hour video that was um, like a recap and retrospective on Gamergate, which happened 10 years ago now, which is unreal to me, 10 years ago. And I remember at the time not really grasping what this was about. I had just sort of a, a vague understanding of what was happening, but this video was, utterly fascinating and um it only took me you know like three plus hours to get through because i tend to watch most of my videos on at least one and a half speed two times speed depending on the person uh depending on the channel just like how fast they actually are talking how hard it is to understand them at higher speeds but it was completely fascinating and i feel like the the person really tried to go into um like thoughtful depth and like the nuance of it and what was wild to me was that even 10 years later, they were there were some of these gamer guys that were in her comment section, like actively arguing with people. Refreshingly, there were also some people in there that were like, yeah, I was one of these gamer bros like back in the day and I regret it and I'm so glad at how I've grown. And I'm like, well, at least there's, there's some hope here. Uh, but who was the channel? Was it Savvy Something Reads? Um, I'll try to find it and link it if you're interested, but I just, this is the rabbit hole I'm down lately is these really long form like video essays. Um, and it just makes such good background noise while I'm diamond painting. So if you have any recommendations for channels to check out for that kind of content, feel free to leave them in the comments. Um, other like ones that I have watched a lot of and enjoyed, like Jenny Nicholson, Sarah Zed, uh, Swoop, Cruel World, Happy Mind. There's, I know there's others I'm not remembering, but those are some of my, uh, those are some of my favorites, um, and that I have been, you know, either actively watching recently or that I have binged a ton of their content. So, um, and then listening to, I after my Week One Drills and Chills video where one of the questions was, was what. Uh, album like what music makes you think of fall and I was like oh Taylor Swift's Evermore uh, I've been pulling that album back up in an attempt to get in in the spirit of, of fall as best I can in this heat so um, but yeah that's my reading and watching and listening to updates you'll have to let me know in the comments if there's any uh, any of these sorts of things that you've been into and want to share about and then as far as what I have coming this week video wise um, like I mentioned earlier it's going to be a little bit dependent on what comes in the mail um, hypothetically, I should have a Diamond Art Club kit coming in. I don't know. I don't, I doubt that my, you know, sneak peek this week will be on time, but it's just, it comes in when it comes in. <laughs> it is what it is. Uh, I, um, what did I, I wrote down. I did some unboxings. I just got in. I just, I went ahead and bought a couple of kits from, um, Muni Made little snack size kits and I had some points to use there. Um, I had, she's posted publicly about how her husband, uh, had recently gotten laid off as well and also works in tech. I'm telling you what, the tech job field right now is brutal. People are getting laid off and losing their job. It's just, it sucks. It sucks. And there's like a new article that came out with the statistics of ghost postings on like LinkedIn um, are up like 60%. And it's, I mean, it makes sense. Adam has applied for hundreds, hundreds of jobs. Um, and the idea that, you know, the majority of those are ghost postings. It's just terrible. It's ghost postings are, um, it can be either it's a posting that like a company has put up just to make it look like their company is growing. They have no intention of hiring for it. Uh, some companies will do postings just to gauge the job market or something like that. There's a couple of different reasons why companies would do it, but no matter what it is, it means that they have no intention of actually filling that position. Or sometimes they just want a big pool of candidates to choose from when later on down the road, they decide that they actually do want to hire. So 
it's just, it, it's very, very frustrating. So I thought, okay, there's a sale. I am trying to like have a little bit of a budget for some things. So I did get a couple of really small mini made kits, one of which is a fall kit. I'm thinking I'll be working on either this month or next month. So I'm thinking I might try to do that unboxing this week. We'll see. Um, and I don't know, maybe some uh, reviews. We'll see. I'm just going to follow my nose a little bit and uh, you'll get videos, including a week two video for drills and chills from me on Saturday, which you will see all throughout the next couple of months is drills and chills weekly videos on Saturdays with lots of giveaways. So anyway, if you made it all the way to the end, um, how about your favorite flag emoji in honor of this banner, which ugh, I was so excited at first when I saw this color blocking of like the red background. And initially when I did that first, I could see the cutout of this lion insignia that was gonna be here. But as I'm putting the colors of that lion insignia down, you can see the faint orange right here. And then the bright yellow, I wish the whole thing were this bright yellow. Um, this is literally just, I think what happens. I don't think Heaven and Earth Designs does any real, like I can't, okay, I can't say this for sure. I just know that this doesn't look to me like there's any hand charting whatsoever that's been done. And to be honest, I can't, I can't fathom Heaven and Earth Designs putting out the number of charts that they do and hand charting them, especially ones that are, that are absolutely enormous like this one. Um, but the amount of pixelation can be kind of a bummer sometimes. But anyway, if you made it to the end of the video, we're still going to go with some kind of flag emoji if you want to go with the red flag. <laughs> you don't have to be a red flag. I was like, there definitely is an actual red flag emoji. So you be like, my red flag is blah, blah, blah. That's just if you want to be silly though. Uh, but yeah, let me know how you're doing. Let me know what you were working on while we chatted today. Uh, thanks for letting me chat your ear off, especially I feel like this is a little bit of a scatterbrained video to me. I hope it didn't feel that way to you, but either way, I appreciate that you took some time to spend with me today. I hope um, please subscribe if you want to stay up to date with my diamond painting videos, including these weekly whip and chats. I would love to have you here. I'm going to let you go though. Um, I hope you have a day and a week that's as amazing as you are. Stay safe, stay cool, and I will talk to you again uh, real soon. Okay. Bye. Mm -hmm.